Thank you very much to the praise team for lifting us heavenward. Behold, he comes. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Let the church say amen. It's so wonderful to be in the house of God today to hear his message. A bittersweet mission, no pain, no gain. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And it's wonderful to rejoice also with those among our congregation who have served in the armed forces, veterans. We honor you today, honoring all those who serve. It's Veterans Day. Our vision statement here at All Nations is on the screen. Uh, let's continue to memorize it by saying it out loud together. What is our vision statement? God's transforming love from His Spirit and Word through his inclusive community, to his seeking world, whatever the risk. As you can see, there's a QR code on the screen if you want to download the slides. Thank you to a young preacher who read the scripture reading for us from Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 through 11. Let us hear the word of God one more time. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and I said, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it. And it will be bitter in your stomach, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples nations, tongues, and kings. A bittersweet mission. No pain, no gain. Let's pray together with our usual prayer song, Open Mine Eyes That I May See. Open mine eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth you have for me Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth you send so clear. And while the glad notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Open my mouth and let me peer Gladly the Christ, truth everywhere Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready my God I will to see Open mine eyes Illumine me Spirit divine Silently now I wait for you Ready my God Your will to see Open my eyes Illumine key phrase from our scripture reading is one that I will be sharing with you over and over as we present God's message today. The preacher will say, go, take the little book which is open and eat it. And the congregation will respond, give me the little book. All right, so that's our 
uh, response activity for today, to help us receive the Word of God into our hearts and digest it. So, go, take the little book which is open, and eat it. And what do you say? Give me the little book. The first point that God wants us to remember from our text for today is that he has called us to mission within the kingdoms of this world where we live. God has called us to a mission. It's a bittersweet mission. That's why in our scripture reading we read that when John ate the book, it was sweet and it was bitter. It's a bittersweet mission. There is great benefit and gain and rejoicing when we engage in this mission. But there is also great difficulty and challenge and pain when we engage in this mission. But we have to engage. We should engage. God's message to us today is calling us to engage in this mission because we are called to mission within the kingdoms of this world. Chapter 10, verse 9 says, It will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Some people stay away from the call to mission because of the pain involved. But the message today is no pain, no gain. Daniel had a similar experience as a prophet in the Old Testament. When he received a vision from heaven, it is recorded in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 15 that he said, I was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Those of us who are called to preach, those of us who have the mission to preach, we wish we can preach messages that only are sugary and sweet and honey-tasting. And there's a lot of that wonderful sweetness in the Word of God, isn't there? But there's also challenge. There's also difficulty. There's also bitterness. There was, there's also pain. We see this in the experience of John, who shares his experience in our scripture reading today. But his experience was not unique. It was reflected already hundreds of years ago in the experience of Daniel. And Daniel was troubled because in his vision, he saw great monsters coming up out of the ocean, which was stirred up by hurricane winds. And out of that ocean, these four great beasts came up out of the earth. And the angel told him that these represented four kingdoms. Now, some of you are students of Bible prophecy, so you know what these four kingdoms are, don't you? Babylon was one of them. What's the next one? Medo-Persia. And the third one, Greece. And the fourth one, Rome. Four great beasts representing four kings and four kingdoms that would arise out of the earth. That's the bitter part for Daniel. But the sweet part is the saints will receive the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Isn't that good news? That's the sweet good news. But the bitter part is that the saints would have to do their ministries in the midst of those kingdoms represented by those four terrible beasts. And Daniel was troubled about it. But let's remember the sweetness. While we are called to mission, difficult mission, within the kingdoms of this world, yet there is the grand and sweet assurance, like honey, that after we have completed our mission, we will go marching in to the kingdom of heaven. Can you say amen to that? Or when the saints go marching in, or when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in the number when the saints go marching in. What about you? When I get to heaven, it's going to be by God's grace. And when I get to heaven, I hope to see all of you there. But those of us who will be in heaven will be those who have accepted God's call to mission while we're here on the earth. Daniel is concerned because the angel told him in verse 25 that the saints would be given into the hands of those kings and those kingdoms. There would be persecution. There would be difficulty as they engaged in their mission. That's the bitter part of this calling. But the sweet part again, verse 27, then the kingdom and dominion 
and all the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people, the saints of the Most High God. Do you see the mixture here of bittersweet? Bittersweet. Our mission begins in this world, among the kingdoms of the world, and Jesus said you will have opposition, you will have persecution, you will have criticism. Not everybody will like you when you accept the call to engage in my mission. But if you endure and are faithful to the end and carry out the mission in my strength, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven. In verse 28, we read the words of Daniel. He says, this is the end of the account. This is how the mission of God's people will end. But as Daniel considered the difficulties between now and the end, he was still troubled. He said, as for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance was changed. So the bittersweet mission that we are called to can be challenging and discouraging even for the prophet. But there's a lesson we can learn from pain. Tony Robbins said, change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. That's a profound statement, isn't it? Think about it. Change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. If we're going to change and grow up into the full stature of men and women in Christ Jesus, it's going to cause us some discomfort and some pain. But if we don't grow up, that's going to cause us a different kind of pain. In other words, we can't choose whether or not we're going to have pain in this world. Am I right about that? You could say amen. <laughs> we can't choose whether or not we're going to have pain in this world. You're going to have pain of one kind or another. Some of us will have more pain. Others will have less pain. But we're all going to have pain. But the question is, in what cause, in what mission will we experience pain? Do we want to experience pain while serving in the kingdom of Satan? Or do we want to experience pain while serving in the kingdom of God? You have to pick your pain, right? <laughs> and Tony Robbins says, change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. The pain of working in the devil's mission is a more unproductive pain than the productive pain that we experience when we work for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I've come to talk to you today about a bittersweet mission, no pain, no gain. The praise team sung a while ago about the days of Elijah. Wasn't that a good song? These are the days of Elijah, which means God is calling us on a mission similar to the mission he called Elijah on. And we read about Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. He was greatly successful in his mission. First, he had spoken the prophecy that said there would be no rain. And then there was a showdown on Mount Carmel, and the true God showed up by sending fire from heaven. You remember that? And there was a revival and a repentance among the people. And Elijah prayed for rain, and then the rain came. Showers of rain from heaven. The Bible says here in verse 45 and 46, there was a heavy rain, so Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran ahead of Ahab to Jezreel. Uh, Elijah ran ahead of the horses to escort the king back to the capital city of Jezreel. And then after this great success, this wonderful, sweet victory that Elijah experienced, the next morning when he was tired, he got a message from Jezebel saying, I've put out a hit on you, and you're going to be dead by the same time tomorrow. And when Elijah saw that, he was terrified, and he arose, and the Bible says he ran for his life. The day before he was running for God, 
Now he's running to save himself from God's enemy. He ran for his life. Elijah was a man of like passions like us, the Bible says, right? So when God calls us into mission, everything doesn't go sweet. Sometimes we have great days of wonderful success, and other times we have days of challenge and even depression. And this happened to Elijah. He was running for his life. And notice what he prayed in 1 Kings chapter 19. He prayed that he might die. This is God's man, God's prophet. He prayed that he might die. Have you ever been there? Maybe just for a brief moment, wondering whether life is worth it, wondering whether you should stick with the calling that God has placed on your life. Elijah was like us, and he was discouraged and depressed. But God didn't give up on Elijah. Can you say amen? The angel of the Lord came back twice and touched him in his depression and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And Elijah went on in the strength of that food as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And then he went into a cave and spent the night there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now the question that came from God implies that when Elijah was running for his life, he was not running in the right direction. Are you with me? He was running in the wrong direction. He was being like Jonah. You remember Jonah? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Nineveh went in exactly the opposite direction. Well, Elijah had been running in the wrong direction. We know that because God said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I didn't send you to Horeb. But the good news is that even when we are moving in the wrong direction, God does not give up on us. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Even when we're distracted and discouraged and depressed because of the pain of the mission that God has called us on, God is still with us. That's wonderful. Elijah was running in the wrong direction, and God was running after him. God sent an angel to feed him and to encourage him. And when Elijah got to what he thought was a safe place where Jezebel would never be able to reach him, God says to Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? This is not where I want you to be. But yet, God was with Elijah in the place where God had not sent him. Isn't that something? Isn't that encouraging? That's good news. The God of Elijah is our God as well. And let us take courage from the experience of Elijah as we experience the ups and the downs of the bittersweet mission that God has called us to. No pain, no gain. You remember the story of the man who had a dream about what it was like to walk with Jesus. And as he looked back in his dream, he saw two sets of footprints. One set of footprints belonged to him, and the other set of footprints belonged to Jesus who walked with him. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus was walking with Elijah, even in his depression and his discouragement. And Jesus is walking with us when we go through our challenges and our pains that is part of being on mission for Jesus in this world. So the man in his vision, in his dream, looked back and saw two sets of footprints and he was encouraged. But then, further on in his dream, he saw only one set of footprints at the time when he was most in trouble. And he said, Lord, you said you would never leave me or forsake me. How come one set of footprints? You know the story, right? God said to him, well, my friend, that was the time when I was carrying you. That's why there's only one set of footprints. So, as I present to you this message about a bittersweet mission that God called us on, no pain, no gain, I want to encourage you that God will be with you in the struggle. Amen? God will be with you when you're experiencing pain. God will be with you when you are sick. In fact, if you have to die in this mission, God will be with you as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. 
And the fact that we go through pain does not mean that we're not on the right track. The fact that we get discouraged from time to time does not mean that God is not with us. He is with us, and he will see us through. Even if we die, he will resurrect us. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. So are you ready to take on a bittersweet mission? No pain, no gain. The preacher says, go, take the little book, which is open, and eat it. And what do the people of God say? Give me the little book. Second point in our message. When we're on this bittersweet mission, we are on mission, not by ourselves, but we are on mission with the king of kings. Our mission takes place within the kingdoms of this world, these terrible beasts that fight against each other. We see war and conflict in the news every day, these days. We do our mission in the midst of this world where there's great conflict and trouble and pain and sickness and sorrow and death, but we're not alone. Just like Elijah was not alone, amen? God sent his angel to be with him. God met him in Horeb, even when he wasn't in the, in the place where God wanted him to be. So the good news is that when God calls us to this bittersweet mission, he will go with us on the mission. We'll not be alone. I'm thankful for that. What about you? We are on mission with the king of kings. One of the reasons why uh, Daniel and John had a bittersweet experience as prophets is because it seemed that there was no one to help. Here in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 4, John says, I wept much. Why did he weep? Because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and to look at it. So he wept much. So it was with Daniel. He was told to seal up the book until the time of the end, when knowledge shall be increased. And like John, Daniel was troubled. But a message came to John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. What is the message? Do not weep, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seals. Jesus is with us on the mission that he has called us to do. The lion of the tribe of Judah is with us. When we think of this phrase, no pain, no gain, sometimes we think of weightlifting, don't we? <laughs> the idea is to put a lot of weight uh, on the bar and then to try to lift it because as you exercise those muscles against resistance, you'll build muscle. But in order to build muscle, it causes an ache in the muscle, doesn't it? But people are willing to do that because no pain, no gain. Now, while lifting weights can build your muscles, if you lift, lift too much weight, you can injure yourself. And then you won't experience gain, you'll experience decrease in your physical ability. Well, this mission God has called us to do is a mission that's too heavy for us to lift on our own. And so we need help with the mission. And the good news is that God is our spotter. This guy who is helping the other guy with the weights, that we call that the spotter. And God is the one who helps us lift the weight when we're on a mission with him. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that good news? Jesus says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. We are on mission not by ourselves, but alongside the King of Kings. In a few weeks, we'll be in the Christmas season, and people will be saying this little bit of poetry. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been good or bad. So be good, for goodness sake. When I was growing up, my parents didn't talk to me a lot about Santa Claus. They let me know that the real... Uh, gift giver is Jesus, who gave his son to die for us. And I uh, believed in Jesus as a young kid. But I still went through growing pains as I grew up in, G 
Jesus Christ. And one of the growing pains was connected to the fact that at the age of 10, when I was baptized, I believed that Jesus would help me be good. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. Uh, he knows if you're good or bad, so be good, for goodness sake. Well, at the age of 10, I understood that Jesus could help me be good. And I trusted in him to do that. Uh, and accepted him as my personal savior and was baptized. But that walk with Jesus, beginning at the age of 10, uh, didn't mean that I didn't have growing pains. You know? Part of growing up is experiencing pains. So by the time I got into my teen years, I became somewhat discouraged with my walk with Jesus. And you know what discouraged me? I've been walking with Jesus all this time, and I still don't feel good enough in order to be sure that I will make it into God's kingdom. That was very sad, but that's what I experienced. I didn't feel good enough. Yes, Jesus had helped me be good in some ways, but I wasn't good enough to be sure that I could be in God's kingdom. And that was one of the growing pains I went through in my walk with Jesus. But then in my first year of college, I came to understand the good news of the gospel a little bit more completely. And I found assurance in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as a result, I recommitted myself to Christ and decided to become a preacher. And that's why I'm here with you today, preaching the good news of the gospel. But now I want you to know something that Jesus is still helping me be good, as he started to do when I was 10 years old. And guess what? Don't tell anyone. I'm still not good enough. I'm still not good enough. But I'm not discouraged anymore about it. I'm pressing on the upward way, gaining new heights every day, still praying as I onward climb, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Jesus is still helping me. I'm still not good enough to have assurance of salvation, but blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased by his blood, born of the Spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Is it your story? Jesus is there to overcome and to assist us to overcome, to help us bear the weight, to help us to grow up, and even when we're not good enough in ourselves, we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. That's what it means to be on mission with the King of Kings. He is with us even in spite of our weaknesses and in spite of the fact that we're not good enough for the mission. The good news is that He is good enough. I'm so thankful for that today. What about you? Jesus is good enough, and he is with me when I accept the call to go on a bittersweet mission where there will be pain, but there will be great reward because of what we allow Jesus to do in our lives. The story is told of the Ethiopian eunuch who was reading from the book of Isaiah, and he read the place where he is led like a sheep to the slaughter, and his life was taken from him. And Philip, beginning at that scripture, preached to him about Jesus, the good news of Jesus. And that's what I'm preaching about today. Now Jesus and the sermon that Philip preached began from the scripture. He was led as a sheep to a slaughter. But the rest of that scripture is found in Isaiah 53 and verse 5. And it goes like this. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So when you think about no pain, no gain, I don't want you to focus so much on your pain. As if your pain could earn you a place in God's kingdom. When we think about this message about no pain, no gain, I want you to think about his pain. 
He is the lamb led to the slaughter. He is the one who took upon himself the sin of the world. He is the one who died so that we might live. And then he was resurrected in power on the third day, demonstrating his power to save those who are sinners. His pain is the basis for our assurance of salvation. Can you say amen? No pain, no gain, yes. But his pain is our gain. By his stripes, we are healed. So that's the second point of my message for today. When we are receiving this call to go on a bittersweet mission, no pain, no gain, we are on mission with Jesus. And his pain is for our gain. I say hallelujah to that. What do you say? The Ethiopian eunuch heard the message, and as they drove along in his chariot, he said, see, here is water. What does hinder me from being baptized? We've been having a baptismal class with some of the young people of this church, and some of them are making decisions to be baptized. So soon and very soon, in a few weeks, we're going to have a baptism right here in this church. And I'm thinking about that as I think about uh, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The eunuch said, what does hinder me from being baptized? And Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. What do we need to believe this morning? that we are on mission with the King of Kings, or traveling through this life is a mission that we are called to take on with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't have a choice whether or not we're going to travel this journey through life, do we? We're stuck with it. We're going to have to take this journey one way or the other. But it does make a difference who you walk with on the journey. Are you with me? And Jesus says, I want to walk with you. I want to go on the mission with you. I want to help you accomplish the purpose for your life. To help you accomplish your life mission. We are on a mission with the King of Kings. And when we decide to walk with Jesus, we symbolize that by being baptized. I was baptized at the age of 10. Some of you are baptized at a young age as well. Others of you baptized at an older age. But whenever you are baptized, whether you are baptized in a pool, or whether you are baptized in a river, or in the ocean, you are baptized into Christ. And because of this, you rejoice in the fact that he is with us on our journey. We are on a mission with the King of Kings. Today, someone might say, yes, but I'm not sure I believe with all my heart. Uh, maybe my faith is not strong enough. So I'm not ready for baptism. But I have good news for you today. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 that faith as the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Isn't that something? Now why is it that faith that is so small can move mountains? Because it's not really the faith that moves the mountain. It's Jesus that moves the mountain. We're on the mission with Jesus. And our faith is simply our connection with Jesus. And it doesn't matter whether your faith is weak or strong. If you put your faith in Jesus, then you're connected to the power of the creator of the universe. And you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I've shared this text with you before. I want to share it again. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes how? By hearing. Hearing what? The Word of God. Are you hearing the Word of God today? Yeah, you can say amen. Are you hearing the Word of God today? Well, if you're hearing the Word of God, faith is coming into your heart. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So faith has come into your heart. The question is, how are you going to use the faith? And my recommendation is, put your faith in Jesus as your personal Savior from sin. We are called to a bittersweet mission. No pain, no gain. If you reject Christ, you're still going to experience pain. If you accept Christ, he will be with you in that pain. And his pain is our gain, and we have an assurance that we will triumph at the end, and our mission 
will be successful. So the preacher says, go, take the little book which is open and do what? Eat it. And the people of God says, give me the little book. Third and final point, our mission manual, the Bible, our mission manual is not just for prophets to eat. Someone might say, well, God told the prophet John to eat the book. But I don't have to eat the book, do I? <laughs> but I want to leave you with this final point in our message today. Our mission manual, the Bible, this little book that is opened, is not just for prophets. He had a little book open in his hand. And I took the book out of the angel's hand, says John, and I ate it. And it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. When I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again. But the book is not just for prophets. Are you with me? It's not only prophets who should read the book. There was a modern philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, who said, you should not be afraid of someone who has a library and who reads many books, but you should be afraid of someone who has only one book, and he considers the book to be sacred, but he doesn't read it. Isn't that sad? If you believe the Bible is God's word, but you don't read it? <laughs> you say it's only for the prophets? No, the book is for all of us. This mission manual is for all of us. We're all called on a mission. Not just the prophets are called on a mission. Are you with me today? All of us are called on a mission, and our mission manual is the Bible, and we should read the Bible. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 says, Whatever things were written beforehand were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Holy Spirit, might have hope. Isn't that wonderful? God has given us a mission manual, and we need to study the mission manual. That's why we preach the Word of God here every Sabbath at the All Nations Church. That's why you have come to hear the preaching, because the mission manual is not just for prophets, it's for all of us. Amen? We all need the Word of God. But when you read the Word of God, I want you to remember that the purpose for reading the mission manual is to get to know Jesus. The theme of the Bible is Jesus and how he died to save men. The plan of redemption assures us he's coming back again. When we read the Bible, the key to understanding the mission manual is to discover Jesus in the Bible. You remember the Ethiopian eunuch we talked about? He was reading Isaiah, and Philip drew near to him and taught him from the Scriptures the things concerning Jesus Christ. You're familiar now with one of my favorite texts, John chapter 5, verses 39 and 40. You are searching the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these do testify of me, but you are not willing to come to me that you might have life. The Bible is our mission manual as we go through the bittersweet mission of our lives. The Bible is our mission manual. It's not just for prophets. It's for all of us. And when we rightly interpret the Word of God, we discover the truth about Jesus. And that reminds me of the second point we have already covered in our message, that as we go on our mission, we're not alone. Amen? Who are we with? Jesus, the King of kings. Do not weep, Daniel. Do not weep. John, do not weep, all nations. We are not on the mission alone. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose its seals. So we need to eat the book. All of us are called to eat the book. And this is where I'm going to bring my message to a close today with an appeal to you to study the Bible, to read the Bible, to believe the Bible, and to discover Jesus in the Bible. We are on mission. 
with the King of Kings. Where is our mission? Our mission is in this world filled with kingdoms. We live in the kingdom of the United States of America. We live here in Barron Springs, some of us. Here is our mission field. The mission is a bittersweet mission. No pain, no gain. But his pain is our gain. He died for us, and by his stripes we are healed. And he has left us the Bible as the mission manual for us to study so that we can learn the truth about Jesus and have wonderful success in our mission. So the preacher says again, go, take the little book which is open and eat it. And what do the people of God say? Give me the little book. Well, I think you've uh, gotten the message for today. Uh, number one, God has called us to a bittersweet mission. No pain, no gain. The mission is right where we are, wherever we live in the kingdoms of this world. The good news is we are on mission with Jesus Christ. And he has given us a mission manual, the Bible. And if we continue to study God's word and fall in love with Jesus, we will have a wonderful success in the mission that he has called us to. By your responses, I think you have readiness to take the book and to eat the book, even though you know it's a bittersweet experience. If this is really where you are as you listen to God's word today, would you stand with me as a signal of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Stand with me as a signal of your acceptance of this message acceptance of the call to go on this bittersweet mission, walking with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. We soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that in this world of suffering, sin, sickness, and death, you have not left us alone, but you have sent us a Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for calling us on this mission. Sometimes we find it a little intimidating because we know it's going to be a painful mission. But Father, we live in a world of pain even if we reject Jesus Christ. So today we accept him as our Savior. We accept his painful sacrifice on our behalf and we are making a commitment now to finish the mission in the strength of Christ. We thank you for accepting us, not because we're good enough, but because you're good enough and you share the gift of your righteousness with us. So now we commit ourselves to walking with you, to trust in you to help us to get better every day still praying as we onward climb, Lord, plant our feet on higher ground. This is our prayer today. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, let the Church of God say, Amen and Amen. Now we're going to sing our closing hymn. God be with you till we meet again. You're going to go out into the world. You're going to go out on mission for Jesus Christ. There are going to be difficulties. There are going to be blessings mixed in. It's going to be a bittersweet journey. But Jesus is with us. Amen? And when Jesus is with us, God is with us. So we look forward to seeing you next Sabbath. But until then, God be with you on the mission till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you With his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again Neath his wings protecting hide you 
daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put his arms unfailing round you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening way before you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet again at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you till we meet uh, let's try that again till we meet till we meet till we meet again at Jesus feet till we meet till we meet God be with you we have for the benediction today. Thank you, Pastor Clifford. Lead us to the throne of grace as we go on from here on this bittersweet mission with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we bow our heads? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you so much for all the many blessings that you've given us, but specifically, Lord, we want to thank you for the pain that you shed on Calvary's cross so that we, through faith, can share in the gain of eternal life. Lord, as we leave this place, we pray that your mission will be our mission. Your purpose will be our purpose, and we will go forth proclaiming the good news of your soon coming kingdom. Lord, bless us until this end, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What a beautiful Sabbath it has been. Thank you so much for coming. We have come to the end of our service today. And I hope our hearts have been melted by this message. Thank you, Pastor Hannah, for reminding us our call, our mission. We have to go. God is ready to give us the blessings. He is already on a mission. He's just enlisting us, and uh, thank you so much. I cannot say much about it because you have shared the message in a way that many of us have understood. Thank you so much for those of you that have participated in our service today. We still have another Sabbath to come. If you have something, uh, you want to share a testimony or a song, or you want to participate in this service in one way or another, whether to share the children's story or a prayer, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, I thank you so much. Happy Sabbath. May God be with you until next Sabbath. Amen.